Passwords can be really annoying, but they are important. And I'm here at Harvard to talk to computer scientist Michael Mitzenmacher about how we can make passwords better and still keep them safe. Passwords are really annoying. I think so too. <laughs> Why are they like that? Well, I think th the reason that they're like that is because people who are in charge of setting up the password requirements, right, it's their job or on the line, you know, have a stake in saying, well, we want to make sure people don't break in, right? So how do we make sure people don't break in? One thought is that you just make passwords very complicated so that people won't be able to, to break in and, and get the information underneath. Uh, the question is really from the scientific viewpoint, whether these complicated policies are actually having the right result or actually making it harder for people to break in or not. So I just had to set up a, a new password recently and I actually brought the list of requirements from this place because it was over a page long. <laughs> you know, it, it says that first of all, I have to do the standard has to be at least eight letters long and has to have an uppercase letter or lowercase letter, but also a number and a special character, but only one of six that they give me to choose from. So I can't use an at sign like I want to. And the worst thing about this too is that they remember my last 12 passwords and they remember them for at least four years. So every time I make a new password, it can't be, you know, if I have 15 passwords that I use or three passwords that I use, I can't cycle between them. I have to come up with new ones every single time. And that's just gonna make me write it down, you know? Right, that's, and that's what I think most people end up doing. I mean, that's what I do with some of my passwords. You know, if you can't keep it in your head, you're gonna get stuck writing it down and that's not secure either. So the reason that they do this is that they're afraid people are gonna break into your account. But I don't know that anybody's after my particular Amazon account when they log in. They're just after Amazon accounts so they can buy stuff or transfer money or do whatever else. So you've thought up of ways to, to make it harder to break into the accounts as a whole, even if it might be easier to break into one particular person's account if you know their password. Right, so we were looking at the issue of, you know, all these rules, all these systems are designed to prevent people from breaking into accounts. Um, so we were looking at one of the main ways that people try and break into accounts, which is just they try and break into any account that they can get into. And what's the most natural thing to do if you're going to try and do that? Well, you try and get a list of the most popular passwords and just try all the most popular passwords on all the different accounts. And you know, just by the fact that these passwords are popular means that once in a while you're going to get lucky and you're going to find you have access into somebody's account. So our idea, our scheme was to say, let's try to push people not to do follow specific rules, not to say, you know, you have to have this sort of character or that sort of character, but just to make the popularity smaller for the most popular passwords to even things out in some sense. So you would not allow more than a certain number of people to have the same password no matter what it was, right? Exactly. We'd just limit the number of people who could have a certain password, and then we'd have to keep track of that over time. And that, I mean, that sounds like it would be useful, except in the case where somebody's just going to go through the dictionary. So would there be another rule, like you can't use the word dog as a password, for example? Or... Right. So the problem with the idea of having something like a dictionary is just that if you allow a dictionary, those will quickly become very popular passwords, right? People will like things that they can remember. So our scheme should handle that sort of problem automatically. But you, know, you may still want to have a rule that you can't use something like a dictionary word because that just gives another way that an attacker can attack. So with a system like one of these free email services from Google or Microsoft or wherever, they've got hundreds of millions of people. So they would just say, well, if you've used a password that somebody else has used or that a few other people have used, you're not allowed to use it. But you can use whatever you want as long as it's not something somebody else is using. Yeah, that would be the first, uh, first rule of thumb, which is just let's try and avoid having passwords be too popular. And that way, if someone's going to try and use this popularity attack, well, they're limited in what they can do. Instead of trying 10,000 times to break into an account, maybe they have to try a million or 10 million times to break into an account. And that makes it a lot easier to, to catch them and hopefully stop them or make it more expensive for them to break into an account. So if they know what the 100 most popular passwords are, and they try all those on all the accounts, then they might get in one every thousand times or one every hundred times or something. But if only 10 people can have the same password, that makes it forever. a lot harder, right? It, it, that's the point, is to try and reduce the risk of that sort of attack from you know, one in a thousand or one in 10,000 to one in millions. So what would it take to do this? It sounds like a good idea, but it also sounds like it would take 
both a culture shift and a programming shift in the way things are happening, right? Right. So there's two things that we need to do. One is to actually implement the system, and the work that we had done sort of provided some ideas on how to efficiently implement this sort of system to make it useful in practice. Um, and then we need some tests to see how users react to it and if they like it and if it actually works. And um, you know, we as the scientists did the sort of design and we're hoping that some people will implement it soon and see, see what comes out of it. Are there any clues as to when this might actually be used somewhere? I mean, has anybody thought of using it? Or? Um, I, I believe there's been a lot of interest since our work came out, so I imagine someone may choose to try and use it soon. Well, I will definitely appreciate that once it becomes available. <laughs> as well. Thank you very much for telling me about it. Thanks.